I have with me Mr. Peter Betzel, the CEO of IKEA India. Congratulations on the launch of your second store in the country. To start off with, let me ask, start off by asking you, what are your revenue expectations from the second store over the next one year? Thank you, Charlene. I think you see us all very, very excited here. If you could be closer with the camera, you would see all my excitement and the goosebumps that we have here. We had our launch today and we will open our store tomorrow for the, for the many people in the same manner in Mumbai. It has been a longer journey and I'm very grateful and thankful for all what has been uh, happening with our co-workers and all stakeholders, with the government together to support that in a fantastic way. We have uh, been opening uh, the Indian market with Hyderabad a bit more than two years ago. We have been introducing online in Hyderabad. We have been introducing online in Mumbai and in Pune. And we now it's a big milestone now to open that uh, wonderful and big store with all the home furniture inspiration, what we have here with the wonderful new co-workers, what we have here for the many people in, uh, in, uh, in India and for the many people in Maharashtra. Okay. We want to be, yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, please continue. We want to be for the many people, that is our vision, and the many people have uh, the challenge of living in small space. Fantastic. Uh, this is a challenge what the people have in Maharashtra. It's living with the entire family, with a wider family, multi-generation. This is a big uh, challenge and a big uh, need in Maharashtra, and affordability plays a big role in how to organize your home, in uh, how to organize your home in, uh, in, uh, in that manner, in an affordable way. That, has, that is a big thing. So we have a strong belief even accelerated with COVID, uh, where we all live together more. COVID has uh, made our home, the office, the kitchen has become the restaurant, the living room has to become the playground, and uh, the bedroom has to become the school. So there's a big need and a big dream coming up due to COVID in home furnishing, and then the interest for home furnishing, and in the need of home furnishing. And this is uh, where we have a strong belief of a big success uh, already in Mumbai. Okay. And uh, so far, since it's been two years since the launch of the store in Hyderabad, what is your revenue so far from the store? I think we are very successful in Hyderabad. And uh, we have been launching also last year online in Hyderabad. And the same, uh, we are, so we are very successful exceeding our goals. And then also due to COVID, what I said, with the increasing interest in home furnishing, we're exceeding our goals. And this is why we're also very, looking very, very interested and, uh, and positive in the Mumbai market. We are opening now our store. But we have an omni-channel approach in Mumbai. That means that already we have two smaller store formats under construction because we also see that we need to invest and we would like to meet the people where they are. So we would like to be even more accessible. And the omni-channel approach means for us the big store, the big hub full of inspiration, smaller formats coming up in the city, and also online services. Uh, we can all we have click and collect. You can book online, you can have a planning online, you can have a support from a customer, from a colleague and a co-worker online. So the, the omni-channel approach in, the, in this fantastic city like Mumbai is the strategy what we're accelerating uh, in, uh, in India. Okay, when do we expect the launch of these two smaller format stores in Mumbai itself? They will come up in the coming 12 months. Okay. So in 12 months, we will have a, a big step in omni-channel in Mumbai. Okay. Will these small format stores be limited to two or would you further expand uh, your uh, small format footprint within the city? We have big dreams and big plans for whole India. We have big dreams and big uh, plans for all the big cities in India. And we also have that in Maharashtra. That is still the starting point, what we have here. So we might have uh, more bigger stores in, uh, in Mumbai. We will have many more smaller stores in Mumbai with different sizes. And we will find out for sure new service opportunities and planning opportunities also uh, in the online perspective. So the omni-channel journey has been just starting and we are very curious and very excited about uh, what will bring the future for us in Mumbai and the many more bigger cities in India. Okay. What is the contribution of revenue from onla online retail so far? And by how much do you see it increasing considering omni-channel is the approach that you're looking at where, you know, as a formidable force along with your large format stores? going ahead i think we need to we need to understand when we talk about omni channel that uh, we see our customers are using multiple opportunities uh, to meet uh, ikea and to shop within ikea so multiple opportunities you can meet ikea whenever however whatever you want 
So you can do it online. You can have a planning service online. Next day you come to the store and you will have a, you will touch and feel a sofa. You will touch and try a kitchen. You get a planning. You go back home, you use it online. So it's very, very difficult. We're not thinking in channels. We are thinking in the opportunity for the customer to have a convenient meeting with a, uh, with a, with a, with IKEA and with a range or with a brand. If you come at pure from a general perspective, I think the online perspective will be between 20 and 30 percent of a revenue perspective, and the, the 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 other part will come from our physical stores. But it's not the one or the other. I think the fantastic opportunity is to look on the totality what we have here: online services, being in the store, one in an extra store, one in a bigger store, going back home, have a planning online, order online, or take uh, some of the products uh, with the cash and carry in one of our stores with you. So that's the way how Omnichannel is working. Uh, not the one or the other, but the complementary uh, op- approach on all, on all channels and all opportunities. Okay. You outlined 5 million visitors to visit your Mumbai stores. Can you give us the outline over which period of time you expect 5 million visitors at your Mumbai store? It's a one-year outline. Okay. So we have a big, uh, as I said before, the, the interest for home furnishing and uh, for home furnishing inspiration has been increasing due to COVID dramatically. And uh, we know that uh, our stores are very, very uh, successful when it comes to the interest people would like to visit us. We need to limit now uh, because it also has to be a, a safe place to shop. So the, the, the first weeks and along we, have, we are still in the COVID and the pandemic situation, we need to limit the visitation. But it will be maybe with vaccination or whatever. The future will be a new way of shopping. But the interest to come and visit the store, have a fun day out, meet our people, we'll try and test the range, have a fantastic food. This will uh, this will be maybe even increasing. So if you talk about 5 million uh, visitors in the store in uh, Mumbai, this will be over a period of one year. Okay. Uh, you have invested uh, so far 7,000 crores out of the 10,500 crores that you've outlined. Where have you made these investments in India? And when do we expect you to complete your total investment of 10,500 crores in the country? I think uh, we are we are using the investments wherever uh, in parallel. So we have been opening our store in Hyderabad. We have been investing in the, in fulfillment opportunities in Pune. So we will have uh, also warehouses in Pune, in Bangalore coming up, in uh, in Delhi coming up. We are investing in sites. So we have been site. We are investing in construction. We are in uh, Nagasandra in Bangalore. We are in. Uh, we have been building that store. So the investments go parallel. The same day, same time. Also, we are investing in. Uh, we are investing in uh, sustainability measures and sustainability measures. We are supporting society, vulnerable, uh, uh, vulnerable families. So the investment goes parallel. And uh, wherever we grow, wherever we are, I think that is not the limit. If you say the investment which are released so far, they are not the limit. Here, India is one of the most interesting and most, uh, uh, most uh, the biggest market what we have for IKEA. 1.3 billion of the many people are living in India. It's a young, it's a young country. Uh, there's a big need for home furnishing. There's a big interest in uh, in sustainability. There's a big interest in society. We have uh, we are we are sharing the same needs and the same dreams for India for the future. We have a, a, a equal. Uh, we have a gender equality agenda here. Fifty percent of our fifty uh, percent of our co-workers all over India are, are women. Uh, so equal opportunities. We see that the world is challenged by by global warming. So this is where we have a lot of measures. We will we would like to be circle in our business for the future. We come with the with the purpose of being uh, being good for the society, being good for the people, being good for the planet. So we see India as that we can contribute a lot uh, for the for the future for India, but we also will learn. So India, we also see that uh, it's very good for IKEA because we will learn a lot from the society, from an emerging market, from the demands what we see uh, in the market, uh, but also from the way forward. So this is why we're so excited about India, and where we, this is why we're so excited to come closer and be more uh, reachable and accessible for many people in India. Now it's Mumbai; it will happen tomorrow. We are here for the long term in Mumbai. We will increase in Mumbai. Uh, we will be in Bangalore. We will be in Delhi, and uh, in the future, we will be uh, to many more cities in India. Okay. Uh, how many fulfillment centers do you have across the country so far? And by how and how many more fulfillment centers will you have over the next five years? We are today with fulfillment centers in Pune. 
So that is uh, where we have, but that also our stores like in Hyderabad is in itself a fulfillment store. So we have a big warehouse cap capacities where we are building our store. So we are also fulfilling directly online needs from our store. That is in Hyderabad. That is, for example, in uh, also will be in uh, Mumbai. Uh, that will also be in Bangalore. So it's also a shared network what we're having here. We have fulfillment center in Pune. We will have a fulfillment center in Bangalore. We will have fulfillment center in Delhi and wherever we need it. But also we're using the opportunities of our stores to be very close to the last mine opportunities uh, uh, in the cities where we're operating. Okay. When do we expect you to launch a Bangalore and the Delhi store? I think that will come uh, in the Bangalore is maybe the coming 12 to 14 months. Delhi will come the years after because in Delhi the good news is we also working together with our colleagues from Centre. So we have a site in Gorgon. And we're now coming together with our colleagues from Centre. We would like to create something, a very inspiring mixed-use shopping centre, integrated IKEA, uh, IKEA shopping uh, part. That is a very exciting project. So also Delhi can look forward for meeting, uh, meeting IKEA in the future. Okay. While you source heavily from India, is your entire supply chain are dependent on the products that you source from India itself, or do you also import uh, from other countries into India? Will that shift, uh, the revenue also shift? Will you completely only source from India to serve Indian stores eventually? IKEA is sourcing since more than 30 years in India, so we already have uh, recently more than 50 suppliers already in India sourcing and supplying for India, but also sourcing and supplying for the world. But well, that is, uh, first of all, the good news. And then we have been starting in India already with 2,000 articles, uh, which we are sourcing in India. So, And we also have 20% of the share and the volume uh, we are already sourcing in India. And that will increase while we are growing. This uh, share will also increase. We have plans for 30, 40, 50%. IKEA is a global supply chain. So we have a global knowledge, uh, more than 50, 70 years knowledge about how to do that. And we are also coming with a lot of knowledge, with a lot of competence, technique transfer. But we also have high demands on our products and we have high demands on our suppliers. On the product perspective, uh, it starts with the raw materials. i give you an example of wood. We are only using uh, responsible forested of certified wood in all our supply chain. So this is one demand. We are using better cotton initiatives. So uh, no pesticide, uh, fair paid uh, farmers. This is what we're doing. So high demands already when it comes to sourcing, high demands on our products when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, uh, quality, when it comes to sustainability measures, high demands on our suppliers when it comes to their social behavior towards uh, their, uh, their, uh, their co-workers and their environmental footprint. But this means also for our suppliers, we, we take long-term commitments. Uh, we are helping them to finance, but we take long-term commitments with our suppliers. We are very positive uh, to increase the supply uh, in, uh, in, in India, not only for India, but also for the world. But it comes along with some prerequisites what we need to build together with uh, many more stakeholders, with our suppliers, with the governments, and maybe with other retailers uh, in the IKEA, in, in, in India when it comes to furniture. Okay. So just to clarify, 20% is what you source from India globally, or is it only for the Indian market? It's for the Indian market. 20% of what uh, we are selling today is already sourced in India, which I think is a fantastic use. Oh, you've recently reduced your prices. Do we and do we expect you to further reduce prices because you've talked about the wallet thinning in uh, you know globally, not just in India. So do we see a further reduction in prices from your end? Absolutely. I said before, the, we have three main uh, priorities. The one is to become even more affordable for the many people, more accessible and more convenient for the many people, and to have a, a to grow in a responsible way. But we talk about our business has to be positive for people and for the environment and for the planet. So our passion, our passion to uh, to stay for the many people with big dreams and thin wallets is one of our strategies. Whatever we, wherever we're gaining opportunities in our supply chain. We give that uh, to our customers and be more affordable for them. Decrease prices to further cut prices? Yes, we will always, when we have benefits in our supply chain in raw materials, if we increase volume, we give that as a benefit uh, that uh, we will be more affordable. You will see 
that we're investing in new lower prices year by year by year. Okay. Uh, can you also tell us during the pandemic, since everybody is at home, working from home, cooking at home, and you talked about the kitchen turning into a restaurant and the dinner table turning into the office, you know, can you tell us how is this actually panning out for IKEA in terms of demand and how consumer trends actually changing during the pandemic and what items are actually seeing high demand at this point in time? Yes, I, I think we see a high demand. Uh, I said before, the, as, we, as we saw that uh, as we're all at home with the entire family and the multifunctional uh, needs what we have at home, the interest for the home has been increasing. The interest, how can I improve my home? How can I make it more beautiful, more functional, but even more sustainable and more healthy for me? This is uh, what we see in India. Maybe not uh, only IKEA, but many more other companies also. The interest for home furnishing has been dramatically increasing. The need for home furnishing, also the revenue for home furnishing is increasing. If you look on the categories, what we're already offering, so the office part, for example, the home office part has been uh, increasing in, in a lot of cases. Very interesting also the, the sofa part, so the living room, and look on sofa, the bedroom part. So I would like to have more comfort because uh, more is happening in the bedroom. I need to store even more. I need to organize even more at home in the play field. So the multifunctional part in all rooms uh, have been increasing dramatically. And very interesting also, the balcony part. If you have a balcony or a small garden, so even the outdoor furniture, how can I make that more beautiful, more uh, more organized? Also, that has been increasing. Decoration is benefiting because uh, you can do uh, many more things. If you look on a naked wall or you have a fantastic, beautiful wall. Uh, but also when it comes to everything which is connected to cooking and eating, it has been increasing as interest in the revenue in a fantastic way. All over, everything that is related to the home, to a more beautiful and more affordable functional home, has been, uh, has been increasing. Okay. Stand for IKEA globally. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Shalina, can you hear you? Hello, now? yes. Where does India stand? Yes. Where does India stand for IKEA globally? IKEA, India is a market with 1.3 billion of the many people. They are sharing the same dreams and needs uh, for their home. And uh, it's an emerging country. And uh, this is why uh, India will be one of the most important markets and maybe one of the biggest markets in the in the future for IKEA. We are just in the starting phase. I think it's a, we cannot say where does it stand today. I can say we will be belong to the top five countries in the in the future. When we look on that part, we are just in the starting. And this is why we're so excited, feeling like a bit of a startup with all the knowledge and passion and competence we have as a big multinational company. But we feel excited as a kind of a startup. And this is why we're so excited for our next step here in Navi, Mumbai, with a, with a big store coming up tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Betzel, for taking the time out to speak to us. And all the best for, the, for your launch tomorrow in Mumbai. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you Mr. very, very much, Charlene. Thank you.